So I'm going to um, buckle it up. Pull, pull, wiggle, wiggle. Start the engine. Start an engine! on the on position you should hear this noise that's an automatic fail if you do not put it on the on position now I'm gonna do my one minute applied leakage test I shouldn't lose no more than four psi in one minute after you say that hold it down don't let no air up because they can hear it in the back if you do once you push it down you say my needle has settled at 101 psi my time starts now. You should have a timer or your cell phone prepared to do your one minute, set your um, timer for one minute. I'm gonna act like the minute went through. Beep, 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 beep. My time is up. I lost zero PSI. This is a good test because it's no lower than four PSI in one minute. After you say that, remove your foot. Now, I'm gonna do my low air warning light and buzzer test. My low air warning light and buzzer should come on my dash no lower than 55 PSI. You always want to point to the dash. So you get to pump in the um, brake pedal. And you hear it go beep, hold it down. My low air warning light and buzzer came on at 76 PSI. This is a good test because it's no lower than 55 PSI. Move your foot. Now I'm going to do my spring brake pop out test. My knobs should pop out no lower than 20 PSI. Step on that brake, fan it until they both pop out or if they individually pop out, if the red one pop out, you stop to say my trailing brake popped out at such and such PSI and then you keep going to make the tractor pop out. And then when it pop out, you say my tractor popped out at such and such PSI. This is a good test because it's no lower than 20. But since both of them didn't pop out, I got to keep going. Fan these brakes. Boom. My knobs popped out at 26 PSI. This is a good test because it's no lower than 20 PSI. Now, I'm going to do my tug test. To do so, I need to fully charge my tanks. Start the engine up. While we're waiting for the tanks to charge, I'm going to do my in-cab inspection. See 
seatbelt is broke, that's why it's off. My seatbelt is not frayed, cracked, or damaged. It's easy to unlatch, easy to latch. It's um, adjusted to the driver. It's securely mounted. My mirrors, they're not cracked, broken, or damaged. Securely mounted, clean, clear, and working at all times. Adjusted to the driver. My mirror mounted bracket, not bent, dent, broken, not missing, it's securely mounted. I'll check all my mirrors, all my mirror mounted brackets, the same way I did these mirrors and this mirror mounted bracket. Now, I'm going to break the truck into three slices of five. One, two, three. I'm going to start up and come down. One, two, three, four. My windshield rubber seal, no abrasions, bubbles, or cuts. Securely mounted, not leaking. My windshield, not cracked, broken, or damaged. Securely mounted. No illegal stickers and no obstructions on it. My windshield wiper arms, not bent in, broken, not missing, securely mounted. My windshield wiper blades, no, no abrasions, bubbles, or cuts. They're soft and pliable. This is how I make them work and the fluids too. You're going to push the button on the tip of the stick. This gives you a second to think where you're going to go next. We're going to work our way up all the way down. My fuses are in the truck at all times. If they ask you how many, six. My heater, make sure it's on red. I like to use the two in one. Turn it up. Since it's pointing at the feet, my heater is working. It's pointing at the um, defroster too. My defroster is working. Turn it off. My fire extinguisher is, is properly rated, dated, and fully charged, and it's securely mounted. My um, three emergency reflectors are under this seat. It's always in the truck at all times. It's securely mounted. Now we're here. One indicator horn. Gauges indicator horn. My oil temperature gauge is at the normal operating range, no warning light. My water temperature gauge is at the normal operating range, no warning light. My voltmeter is digital. It's at the normal operating range, no warning light. My ABS and my depth indicator came off and on when I started the engine. My depth gauge, it's at the normal operating range, no warning light. It has to be one eighth full. My primary and my secondary air pressure gauges are at the normal operating range, no warning light. All the gauges are at the normal operating range, no warning light. So we finished one, now we're going to two. Our four-way flasher, they're working. My right indicator is working. My left indicator is working. I'm gonna hit the switch up. This switch turns on my high beam. My high beams is working. This switch up turns on my five clearance lights. It turns on my low beams. Yes. So this switch up, low beams, high beams, and five clearance lights are on with the switch up. Now I'm gonna turn them off. My city horn's working. Up here is going to be your freeway horn in the truck that you'll test in. My freeway horn is working. Would you like me to honk it? They're going to say no. Now, I'm going to go back to my tug test. In the tug test, they're the opposite. So for the red, I'm going to test my tractor brake. Automatic, you're going to put it in drive. Press the gas. My tractor brake didn't move. This is a good test. Pop it out. Move the trailer. Same movement. Press the gas. It's in drive. And then press the gas. It didn't move. That's a good test. Now, um, for a stick, you'll put it in low gear. Press it. The red for your tractor. As you come up off of your um, clutch, as you come up, you'll feel the truck tug. Once you feel the truck tug, you're gonna go back down and say my my um, tractor didn't move. That's a good test for this um, manual. You're gonna press it in, put it in low gear. Wait, push the clutch in, put it in low gear. As you come up off of your clutch, you're gonna feel a tug. Once you feel a tug, push it back down. That's a good test because it didn't move. That's how you do it. Now I'm gonna go forward three to five miles per hour. For that test, you're gonna push both ends. Cause that's 
that will allow us to drive. You're going to say, I'm going to move forward three to five miles. Since you said three to five miles, you want to make sure your needle touches at least three. So for automatic, you're going to put it in drive. You're going to come to a complete stop. And you're going to say, my truck didn't pull left to right. I came to a complete stop. That's my service brake. For the stick or the manual, you're going to put it in gear. Push it in. And then you're going to drive forward, come to a complete stop. And say, my truck didn't pull left to right. I came to a complete stop. That's my service brake. You're going to pull it out. Make sure it's in neutral. You're going to turn the key off. And then you're going to put the key in your pocket for an extra three points. Once you put the key in your pocket, you wait for um, further instructions. Then um, the examiner at the DMV on your test date is going to say if you passed or when you do pass, because you will pass. You're going to go to lane one. She's going to say, I want you to drive to lane one. Lane one is for your straight backing, your straight forwarding. And um, when the cones are in front of your... Um, your diesel and you think you're done or you know you're done and everything's straightened up your tires are straight you honk that's how you let them know that you're done after that test she's going to have you do offset left or right only one the next test is alley docking or parallel only one then after that you're going to get on the road for 19 minutes and then when you come back and you're done and you park the truck track tractor and truck they're going to say um you passed and then that's when you go into the dmv and they're gonna ask you for your license. They're gonna puncture a hole in it. They're gonna give it back to you. And then after that, um, they're gonna say, um, we're gonna mail you your updated one and you'll get it in seven to 10 days. And that's it.